you don't need to like have a thousand conversation but maybe you're just giving out a postcard you just talk to a few people you know or your family members your friends that's really saving um, a lot of children Hi folks, and welcome to Humans of the Pro-Life Movement, an initiative of the Pro-Life Guys podcast where we highlight the incredible women and men across the country and around the world who are sacrificing their time and energy to protect pre-born children. And today I'm joined by a very cool guest. Um, I met her several months ago here in Calgary, Olivia, who works full-time for National Campus Life Network. Olivia, how are you doing? Hi Cam, thank you so much for having me today. I'm uh, I'm doing great, <laughs> except with with the uh, the heat in Calgary, though. No. <laughs> yes, we are we are getting hit by a major heat wave here in Calgary. I know that some people love it. I am one of the few that is not a huge fan of the heat, and so um, I am definitely bunkered down in the basement of my house, trying to trying to stay as cool as possible. But I digress. I'd love to start, Olivia, just by getting to know you a little bit better. Share with the audience a little bit about yourself and, and who you are. Uh, yeah, so hi, everyone. My name is Olivia, and I'm coming from Vietnam. I've been living in Canada for almost four years. Um, I came to Canada as an international student, so I studied um, uh, event management major diploma in Bow Valley College. Um, two years ago and I um, graduated last year when the COVID hit really hard and I actually was a little bit struggle last year to find a job and everything to settle in Can- in Calgary but finally um, I found my faith and my new permanent resident started in Canada just also within last year as well so I got um, talking about my faith a little bit uh, before I was uh, a non-religious um, person, and I I started to know about um, Christianity like three years ago when I came to Canada, and then I got baptism last year. Um, since after I got baptism, um, everything was changed for me. I totally become like a much better version of myself. And uh, I also got my per- permanent resident status after got baptism as well. So I decided to live here permanently, enjoying the, um, you know, the mountain view here. Like people are here, and I got to be my my friend list here as well. So um, I'm very happy with my life here in Calgary. That's uh, about my <laughs> history. <laughs> Uh, and then and uh, yeah, I forgot. Like um, so, uh, currently I'm working for National Life Campus Network. Um, is an also polite organization, and I'm going to tell my story more about why I working with them. And yeah. Wonderful. And praise God that um, that baptism and permanent residency, and that you are here in Calgary. It's been a joy working with you and collaborating on a few different projects. And so let's dive into your journey, because I, I think that your journey is is a beautiful and fascinating one towards the pro-life movement. I was wondering if you can share a little bit about your journey, because you haven't always been pro-life. Yeah, so it's really, um, you know, like a long story. So I'll be taking a little bit of time to tell you guys about my unique story. Um, so to be honest, I used to be a pro-choice person for a long time until like um, this year I became pro-life. And um, this this journey is really miracle to me because um, three years ago I saw you guys like CCPR put up a poster about a aborted child on the street. And I walked past um, the posters and I was like, what happened to abortion is fine. I mean, I grew up in a country with, you know, an edu- education saying to me that abortion is fine to everyone and it's like a birth control to, you know, control the population, um, to control the reproduced rights to a uh, woman, and it's fine. But then when I came to Canada, I saw the poster. I was like, oh, what happened to abortion? 
and I saw like many people was like talking um to the volunteer there, and some people even yelling at them. And I was like, why are they doing this? And um, I had a question in my mind, but then I mean, I didn't go back home and do did the research until three years later, um, when I got baptism. And then I prayed to God that, like, God, I wanted to do something, um, you know, meaningful. At the same time, it's also my job. And then three months later, I got a job into National Life Campus Network. And at the beginning, to be honest, I didn't know um, what would be the job. I just, you know, apply for it because I just thinking, okay, let's get a job in Calgary since now I'm become a permanent resident. And um, when I got interview. Um, I did research about abortion, and I was shocked about um the reality of abortion. And when I received a uh, apologetic training from uh NCON and CCPR, I even like you know feel like wow, like this is something I never get educated. I never know about. Nobody talking to me, and I was shocked. I actually. Cry after thinking about the past that I used to support abortion, and I think it's a like a birth control solution to women. And uh, I even supported my family members um, and friends to go for abortion if they needed to, because I think it's normal in my country as well. So I felt so wrong at that time. And then uh, when um, CCPR asked me for going volunteer for door knocking and joy change, I was like, "Yeah, totally. I want to do something. I want to change other people. My just like me that who did not get a chance to get educated about abortion reality, about you know, um, killing the preborn children innocently like that. So, um, that's my journey to become a pro life person." Um, and you know, like I'm, I really like um not regretted anything that I did since last year until now because it's totally changed me, changed my mind, my attitude about abortion in everywhere in the world, not just in Canada. And I believe that is really useful for me, um, to equip me when I have a chance to go back home in Vietnam sometime and I can do some activism there as well to raise awareness about abortion reality there as well. Very cool. Very cool. Praise God for that. And I think that's such a beautiful journey that I, I hope our listeners are, are very, very encouraged by because I think it speaks not only to um, the, the journey that many people are going through and not only the fact that for a lot of people, they're raised with this idea of abortion being normal and abortion being um, a very, very simple thing for for. Uh, women's equality and for um, reproductive rights and health and that sort of thing. And so very, very beautiful seeing your journey through that. And you mentioned in there, not only that you now work for National Campus Life Network, but also the the value of educational work. I know that a lot of the stuff that you do, though, obviously the last year has been very unorthodox, I'm sure, especially for a campus-based organization with students not being on campus. But I'd be very curious over the last year of being active and involved in the pro-life movement, is there one or maybe two memories that stand out um, that that come to mind for you? Yeah, so um, one of them was, I was mentioning that, like, um, the first impression about the Cho Change uh, activism that I saw on the street. And this is, I think it's really powerful to me. Even until now, I still remember that memory. And it's really I kept it in my memory and I I believe um is like a star for me to get to know about abortion um um to, uh, issues here and I think it's is one picture is really says a thousand words so I really like that activity. So um um last um been um I mean I've been being pro life for like seven months so far. So um being being pro life until now, my most memorable one of my most memorable experience was going on for door knocking with CCPR and also um uh choice change that I did like last two weeks. I feel like um I'm very confident with myself. I don't feel like you know shy or sh- like being shameful in front of stranger talking about abortion, and um I. 
I remember there was a woman that like through one conversation with us, she changed totally become pro life, and I was so moved by that. I felt like God really, um, you know, like praise us and give us the power, the wisdom to talk to people. And this is really inspired me to continue to do so because as my background as a pro-choice people, I understand how people, how pro-choice people, like a, a pro-choice person think about abortion issues. And I can start a conversation by, you know, to- being tolerant with them as well. Like we never criticize any other people that um, different have different view with us. I did, I did always listen to people who I, I talk to and then started slowly um, talking about, um, you know, um, whatever I got training in apologetics running and then talking about human rights argument as well. So it's really useful for me and helpful um, in a way that I um, can contribute to pro-life movement. So um, that is one of my memor- memorable experience uh, with Dar Nakin. And then recently, I've recruited some students just through social media, just through the way I put up the pictures because, you know, I learned from CC Bear as well by, you know, put up the picture. So every day I post a picture, I post a um, evidence or I put a conversation on Twitter on, you know, like hot pick on Twitter, on in social media into our um, Instagram account. And I, I found three new students just through social media. So I I feel like thanks. I'm very thankful that I involved with you guys. I involved with NCO and, um, you know, to involve in this pro life movement. And um, yeah, and I very, very proud of what I'm doing as well. Very cool. Very cool. It's so cool to see it as well. I love seeing the collaboration between um, pro-life organizations. We're all working towards the same goal. And I love that note that you touch on there at the end about recruiting uh, these several new students towards being active in the pro-life movement. And that's such a a core component of what National Campus Life Network is all about. Obviously, very, very close to the heart of CCBR as well. And I wonder, in closing... For those who may be watching this video and maybe they're pro-life, but maybe they've never done anything before, what would you say to encourage somebody to get active in the pro-life movement? Yeah, so um, I just have like one thing to say to students being, um, well, um, I know a lot of people talking to me like being like that. Um, well, I'm personally I'm personally pro-life. I personally wanted to protect uh, pre-born children not to be cute, but uh, I don't want to judge other people. I don't want to talk to other people because I'm scared I'm going to, you know, um, hurt other people feeling or something like that. Um, so, guys, trust me. If you are personally pro-life, you've done nothing and you 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 don't contribute anything to pro life movement, and then you you don't you, you don't educate any other people. Then it's nothing happen. I mean, just like me, if nobody come and talk to me, I don't know anything about pro life movement. I don't know anything about abortion done to pre born children. So you know, being personally something is really dangerous. So um, hopefully, uh, being as 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 a student on campus, um, I would encourage everyone. Um, especially whoever um, enthusiasm um, about anti-abortion movement, please uh, sign up for uh, you know a club, a pro-life club on campus, or go to National Life Network website and register to be a student with us as NCO and Doc CA. Um, it's really um, you know um, totally different from you know being like thinking oh um, is. Like I, I'm, I never support abortion, but I done nothing. Then um, you know, or you can just go out on on the street and then knock on one door, at, talk to few students, you know, um, to few other people, and then something miracle happen. I remember um, there one story I heard from CCPR from Kwayana, and she said to me, "It's all, only giving away postcard that saving, you know." a baby um, that uh, a mother later talked to her saying that thanks to your postcard that I 
I decided not to go for abortion um, again. And that's really, you know, powerful, just giving away postcard. So, like, I encourage you guys just, you know, doing something small. Uh, like, you don't need to, like, do it every uh, every day or, you know, like, you don't need to, like, have a thousand conversation. But maybe you just give out a postcard. You just talk to a few people, you know, or your family members, your friends. That's really saving um, a lot of children as well. So that's my advice. Bingo. And I think that's a great way to end, Olivia, just sharing about how we all need to be doing something, right? That, that there's so many people who are oblivious to the pro-life movement, to the pro-life worldview. And because of that, so many people are willing to have abortions or help other people have abortions. We need more people to stand up and, and have the courage to have those conversations to show the reality of what abortion does to preborn children. And as you mentioned earlier, um, both CCBR and NCLN and other organizations as well, we're collaborating to make sure that the onboarding of new volunteers is as manageable as possible. We're not just going to Oh, you're pro-life, here's a stack of pamphlets, go change somebody's mind. But rather, it's a very thorough kind of training. And you mentioned the door knocking that we're doing to coach people through conversations. You're up there with another person who's got a lot of experience to help you out. All that kind of thing. And so we'll put um, ncln.ca in the show notes as well. You can check out um, National Campus Life Network. If you are a student, if you know a student on campus, please do get in contact. I can't speak highly enough of NCLN. Um, if you're not a student, you can still get in contact with them, but you can also get in contact with CCBR. We'll put our website um, in the show notes as well. For those of you who are new to the program, um, this is a, an ongoing series. We have featured lots of very, very cool people in the Canadian and global pro-life movement. Check out those other stories on our YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel. And also check out our regular content, Pro-Life Guys. Uh, we have a weekly podcast where we share apologetics, tools for how to have good conversations about abortion. Um, you can find that on all your favorite podcast catchers on YouTube, as well as our website, ProLifeGuys.com. You can also check out our other sweet stuff on Patreon if you want to support this podcast. Uh, you can get some pretty cool swag and stuff like that. So thank you very much for joining, Olivia. This has been wonderful, and I look forward to continuing to collaborate with you and MC Lennon. In, um, days, months, and years to come. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for uh, um, you know um, putting this podcast to everyone to hear. And um, I wish everyone all the best with um, you know involving pro life movement. And um, yeah, like my wish, my bigger wish is like one day all of us will be pro life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>